G'day everyone! Recently the nominees for the 2024 Game Awards were announced, and while there's normally some controversy over the inclusions every year, this year in particular has caused a large debate over one nominee in particular, Elden Ring Shadow of the Earth Tree. For those unfamiliar, Shadow of the Earth Tree is a DLC expansion to the game Elden Ring which itself won Game of the Year back in 2022. What's contentious is that this is the first DLC in the history of the Game Awards to receive a nomination for Game of the Year, and this has sparked the heated debate, should it be eligible for the award? My first instinct, much like the angry mob of the internet, is no, because it's not a proper game. You have to be your own separate game to be nominated for Game of the Year, right? Well, not exactly. According to the Game Awards' official criteria, the Game Awards aim to recognise the best creative and technical work each year, irrespective of the format of that content's release. Expansion packs, new game seasons, DLCs, remakes and remasters are eligible in all categories if the jury deems the new creative and technical work to be worthy of a nomination. I guess a simpler way of looking at it is, Game of the Year nominees can come in any form as long as they provide an engaging and rewarding gameplay experience for the players. So if the nomination isn't breaking any rules, and it doesn't seem that the rules have been bent or changed in any way to accommodate Shadow of the Earth Tree specifically, by all accounts it seems that it's a fair nomination. And since it's a valid nomination, the real question is, does it belong there over other potential nominees from this year? And the more I thought about it, the more I was totally fine with it, because I believe Shadow of the Earth Tree adds a lot more value than most DLC, even more than some fully fledged games. New weapons, new equipment, new skills, and new magic in a new map with a new story. Honestly sounds like a new game to me. The only real difference is that your character is maintained between the two games and it relies on an existing player having a higher skill level. I actually see a lot of similarities between Shadow of the Earth Tree and Spider-Man Miles Morales. Now to be fair, Miles Morales was not nominated for Game of the Year despite being eligible, but I still feel that comparisons can be drawn between the two. Their isolated story takes place in the same world as the original, but is not integral to the original game's story. Their core gameplay loop is the same as its predecessor, and it expands on the base mechanics by providing additional abilities and weapons. The main difference is that one was released as DLC, and the other as a separate game. And if you ask around, a lot of people believe that Miles Morales should have been DLC anyway. Regardless, yes, they're different games. But from an experience viewpoint, they provide the same thing, more of what players already love. So by all accounts, if one's eligible for Game of the Year, then the other one must be too. Now I'm a firm believer that a game's length has nothing to do with its quality. It Takes Two, the Game of the Year winner from 2021, has an average playtime of 14 hours, but it's a wonderful experience to play. And Miles Morales' web slinging adventure clocks in around the 10 hour mark. But just to put it into perspective, Shadow of the Earth Tree provides an estimated 30 hours of additional content. That's more than other 2024 nominees Astrobot, Bellatra, and Black Myth Wukong. The point I'm trying to make is that Shadow of the Earth Tree definitely delivers on content and isn't some minimal side experience for players. So in light of everything I've said, here's a question I'll pose to you. If Shadow of the Earth Tree was not released as DLC, and instead released as its own standalone game in the world of Elden Ring, would it then be an acceptable nomination for Game of the Year? Not whether it would win, but whether it should be allowed to compete for the award. Because I think the answer is yes. If this was a separate game, there would not be this much backlash, and I think it's unfair to penalise Shadow of the Earth Tree because the developers decided to release the game as a DLC instead of its own game. If it's one of the best game experiences of the year, then it more than deserves its chance to compete for Game of the Year. I think one of the biggest reasons Shadow of the Earth Tree has even been nominated is that 2024 has been on the quieter side in terms of releases. Other years have been absolutely stacked with massive titles like 2017, 2018 and 2023. Each of those years had at least 3 or 4 massive games and didn't leave much room for smaller, more outside picks. This year is lacking in that department. Don't get me wrong, there's definitely been some fun games this year, but I think the scale of those games has been much smaller, and that's allowed a massive DLC like Shadow of the Earth Tree to slip in through the cracks. While I believe Shadow of the Earth Tree deserves its nomination under the current rules, I do think there should be some changes in the interest of fairness for all nominees. A sentiment that I've seen going around online and one that I agree with is that there should be new categories added to the Game Awards. In this case, a Best DLC award would fix most if not all of the controversy. Shadow of the Earth Tree would get to compete in its own category against other DLC like Diablo 4's Vessel of Hatred, and I think it would outright win that category, and I don't think anyone would have an issue with that. Let Game of the Year be exclusively for new titles. Yes, I'm taking remakes out of this too. For 2024, if Shadow of the Earth Tree and Final Fantasy Rebirth were removed, that would allow other deserving games from this year to earn a chance for a nomination. Games like Prince of Persia The Lost Crown, Warhammer 40k Space Marine 2, 
Pokemon with guns, and Helldivers 2 to name a few. This way, the Game Awards can showcase a wider variety of games, reward the hard effort of each of those developers, and give those games the recognition they deserve. But, whether you agree with it or not, Shadow of the Earth Tree has been nominated for Game of the Year. It's not breaking any rules, and the judges have deemed it provides enough of a fun gameplay experience to trump other potential nominees. Though, it is a weird scenario that we've ended up in, and I do believe the fact that it is a DLC must be taken into consideration by the judges for the sake of fairness. But, I honestly don't think it'll matter too much, I think Astro Bot and Black Myth Wukong are frontrunners for the award anyway. And the positive thing is, I don't think we'll run into this issue again, at least for a while. 2025 is already shaping up to be a huge year with Ghost of Yotai, Death Stranding 2, and if it even exists at this point, GTA 6. Now I want to pass it over to you, what do you think of Shadow of the Earth Tree's nomination? Do you think it should have been allowed in? Do you think there are any other games from 2024 that should have been nominated for Game of the Year? Be sure to let me know down in the comments below. That's all for this video, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers everyone.